Well, good evening. I can begin as we try to. If we can't get it, Mary, that's fine, too. We can work our way around it. Um, my name is Dave Stevens. You asked me back in September to chair this particular committee. I'd like to go ahead and introduce the other members of the committee who are here. Uh, Madeline Weaver Blanchett, please stand. Richard Green, Thomas Miranda, Gail Perlman, Bill Scher, uh, Megan Wolf, and Mark Warner and Todd Thompson, also a part of our committee who are not here. I want to thank them for their service because this has been a wild ride. I also want to thank our uh, staff person, uh, Mary Madura, who uh, kept us on track and within uh, the open meeting laws, and also Stephen McGoldrick, who's the deputy director of the Collins Center at UMass, who you folks hired to help us facilitate this process. I want to run through this slideshow. We've, this is only a portion of what we use during the public forums, just to make sure that people are aware of it. It's part of the public record that's posted on the website. Uh, it covers a lot of basic information that you folks all know. 19, or 1654, uh, the city itself was incorporated in 1884. Mary, you can go to the next slide. Um, the, what the charter is, and here's the definition. It defines the structure of the city and town government for a particular community in which may create local offices, distribute powers, duties, responsibilities among local offices, and may establish and define certain procedures to be followed by the city, town, or government. Uh, to the next slide. Uh, the, all the stuff that people can look for, the people who are on home, you can go to your local computer, you can uh, type in that website you see there, and a lot of the information that is currently uh, posted that you can access your way through for those who like to read. Next slide. Um, back in, you had a charter review committee, which is part of your ordinances. That particular ordinance uh, was chaired by Alan Seawall, that committee. Uh, several members here sat in on that. You recommended that we needed to take a look at the a comprehensive charter reform. That description is, is there. That's versus a smaller or incremental charter reform, which you have done in the past. The most recent one that is uh, the changes in the DPW, but also the changes in the treasurer's office. So those were incremental changes. You recommended that we needed to take a look at a comprehensive charter reform. Next slide. Um, the previous efforts were in 1973, where it failed by, I, somewhere in there it tells you how many votes, but it was 152 more margin uh, when they tried to do a comprehensive update of the mm -hmm. charter back then. Then in 1995, uh, another effort was started, but unfortunately that effort did not gain the signatures enough to get itself back onto the ballot. Next slide. So uh, to, we've done incremental changes, and again, these can be... Um, can be uh, viewed as well on the website, but as I pointed out, the ones in the public works, the city treasurer's office and others, that we did by just making small changes to the charter, which is still something we can do later on, but you recommended us to take a look at a full comprehensive review. Next slide. Um, and here are some of the, the acts that you can t list to go through for those incremental changes. The next slide. Uh, this is the, the slide that talks about who was on that committee of the review committee that recommended a comprehensive change, and you can see the members listed mid-page. And then the source tells you how that is created by the Secretary of State's office. So the next slide. Uh, again, this is the Home Rule Amendment uh, in the next slide. And we have gone with a Home, op, home Rule Petition. Uh, may appoint a study committee and then creates the timeline. That's what we are. Next slide. This is your, your uh, charge that you enacted us to be the drafting committee, and you put a sunset clause that today was the last day. You, you made us complete our work by today. We're not complete, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Next slide. Uh, these are the members I introduced, again, with uh, Mary being the staff person and Steve being the facilitator. Next slide. Uh, we held public forums Tuesday, November 15th. We covered the topics you see one through five there. I'll explain those in a little more detail. Next slide is we had a second public forum on December 6th. We covered the, slot, the information you see there as well. Again, this, this is all posted up on the website for people who want to go through this in detail. But we solicited information in all of those three areas you see there, as well as 
Uh, we asked for an um, overview if anybody had other topics they wanted to bring up or revisit any of the ones from the first public forum. Uh, each of these were three hours. They were held here. They were uh, uh, cable, um, uh, local cable access did video them for, so we appreciate that. Next slide. Uh, this is the timeline. I want to review it with you very quickly because it's, it, you guys now play a factor. The drafting committee is supposed to complete by mid-January today. Uh, City Council and the Mayor advance a proposed legislation to Beacon Hill by mid-March. So you have basically 60 days. The Governor reviews and approves. The Secretary of State reviews and puts it on the November ballot. And then the voters will decide to approve or reject November 6th. The key point is in this slide is the bullet number two, the work that we're asking you folks now to advance this. If you're going to meet your November 6th ballot, you need to complete this by March, mid-March, and have all the changes you want into the document by then, because by then the document is frozen. You can't change it after that point. It goes to the legislature who votes it up or down. It goes to the governor who can sign it or veto it. It goes to the Secretary of State who says, yes, it can be on the November ballot or not, but you can't change it after mid-March. Then the voters will be able to, to approve this or reject it. Uh, and it's the last item, as you see there, but they, there will not be a menu. You can't um, interject uh, a substitute amendment or anything. It's an up or down vote on that document that goes all the way back to mid-March. So again, the public that are watching, we're, we're suggesting that the next 60 days is critical. If you find issues in these documents, after you have a chance to read them, you need to talk to your city councils, come to public forums, and um, the, the open meeting discussion at the beginning of these forums to be able to put your input in there. Send the material to Mary Madura, who will post it. But we have 60 days, if we stick to this timeline, to complete that task. Next slide. Uh, and again, this is where this information can be found. You can go to the website, find all the background information, not only the, the review committee, but the drafting committee. And then Mary Madura's email is there where you can send her emails that she will post. Uh, if you have comments on any particular issue, circulate them to the city council. The final slide is uh, the draft, which you should have in front of you, the current version of the draft. This is a working, living, breathing document that you have now until mid-March, if you stay with that timeline, to complete. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to come up with a way to explain the charter, and I don't know how many people have actually read the charter. Myself and those people on the committee, are, we're all kind of wonky people, and we actually like reading regulations. But I was trying to figure out how to demonstrate what the charter is. Um, if you actually read the charter, and I, I culled out a section here which I thought was very intriguing, on page six of our current charter, it refers to the powers of the mayor and the alderman. This is the current charter we're working in refers to the alderman. Um, that is one example of many within this document. The other portion of this document, when I talked about those incremental changes, there have been a hundred of them. They're not actually incorporated in the body of the charter itself. They're over here someplace. What we are trying to do is get it all into one document so the citizenry can turn and take a look at that document and say, oh, okay, I understand how the government works. How this came forward um, in the last election, uh, when the, the mayor then resigned, there was questions about how you fill a vacancy. And it was very difficult in the current charter to be able to, to sort that out. So we're recommending, again, ways to clean this up. Uh, now, when I was looking for that visual to show the difference between what I saw our current charter to look like, I've been fortunate to be married to the same man for 27 years, 6 months, and 19 days. We started an address book back then. <laughs> this is our address book. It has little envelopes in it. It has pages that have been torn out. It has um, people who are no longer with us. It has some people have three or four or five uh, addresses in it. It is a mess. This is what I use as the example for the current city charter. There's scraps of paper in it, there's a handwriting notes in the margins, there are addendums, the special acts which are over here, they're not actually in the charter itself. This is what the current charter of Northampton, our city, looks like. This is what it should look like. 
it should be accessible, that anybody can download it, find out exactly how the rules of our governance are. They should be able to uh, find clean copies of information. They shouldn't have to sort in three or four or five different locations. They should be able to pull it online here. So when our committee got together to set this up, now watch me lose half of this, um, we decided that we needed to make the charter clean. We needed to make the charter comprehensive, but concise, and it needed to be efficient. Uh, we also went with the, um, uh, Gail Perlman, Judge Perlman was, is on our committee, and she was mentioned something that just stuck with me the whole time, that when we develop our recommendations, they shouldn't be, and I'm going to paraphrase her, uh, not just on the myopic lens of the recent political events, but to look at the broader sense to develop what is best for our city for the next hundred years. Again, the last time was 1883. So we're looking at something that we want to keep into the 21st century. Uh, this is a consensus document. It is not, we didn't necessarily have uh, enthusiastic agreement on every issue. Many of you made recommendations. We may or may or not have considered them, but we also recognize that you will now have the opportunity to put your own rubber stamp on, or put your own stamp on this particular piece. Um, we were governed by the open meeting laws, and we also used the Committee on Best Practices as a way to operate. We have met um, 13 times so far. We are fortunate that we have gotten excellent press coverage, and I also want to point out Emily here from the North Street Association. She has logged many, many hours, as many as ours, um, making sure that this has all been taped so the public can access it by going to North Street Association. We held the two public forums I, I talked about. We had a leadership forum. We were invited the mayors, uh, past mayors, uh, current mayor, past city council president, school uh, vice chair, to come and talk about some of these issues and how they interact. Uh, we had just finished a marathon the last two weeks of the eight business nights in the last two weeks, counting tonight. Our group has gotten together six times. Um, in that 90 days that we started from when we first met till today, uh, we have tried to get through the document that you see in front of you. Because again, our document looks like this, we need to um, uh, figure out what our starting point was. And Steve McGolder, who's not here, um, recommended this boilerplate. This institute helps cities and towns create their charters. That's the reason you hired them. This particular um, institute has a boilerplate charter that then you fill in the color for Northampton. What does Northampton want to say in a charter? But they walked us through, he walked us through the process. We reviewed, we picked out topics we wanted to have. Those topics became what was in the forums that we did. Uh, we asked questions. We wanted people to solicit, uh, to send in information. We got reams of information. The books you see here are just some of what has been posted. Um, I didn't download and print all of it, but there are opinions actually from even outside of Northampton for people who wanted to weigh in on some of the topics we talked about. We have minutes. Overall, we probably had about 100 people or so who weighed in and made comments on the charter. I thank all of them for their participation, but to be frank, there's about 28,000 people we have, we have not heard from. Uh, I appreciate Bill and your efforts to keep this publicized, and I appreciate the press for their coverage of this particular issue. Uh, we reviewed all the submitted testimony that, that solicited, and the draft is what you have before you. Again, our goal was to make it comprehensive, concise, efficient, and modern. Uh, we're not really proposing any radical changes here. Uh, it was more a, a job to clean it up, to make the charter more efficient, to make the charter look like this, as opposed to pages that are pasted in and handwritten over. Um, but I'll give you a couple headlines. One of the headlines is, I mean, they've been covered, I appreciate the Gazette's coverage on this and, and NorthamptonMass.org. The, um, the uh, mayor we're proposing going from a two-year to a four-year. All city councils and school committees will be two years. Recognize that some school committee now, your wards, are four years and it's on a staggered term. But I bet that we couldn't find a consensus as to when those terms are right here, which is one of the confusions that people wanted to clean up. So all school committee, including wards, will be two years. We have transferred from the mayor to the city council president, the gavel, for this particular meeting. We created the role, or suggesting, again, these are our recommendations, 
the, uh, the need for a vice president of the city council to act in the absence of the city council president. Now, whenever any of these changes are to occur, they get phased in after the next election. Remember, we have to vote this in next November. Whether this gets changed or not, we have a vote in November, and then there's a timetable of how we phase things in. All right? Um, we've increased this, the threshold for at-large races to 100 and to a mayor to 150 is our recommendation. And again, we cleaned up that language around succession, so it's very clear as to when you kick in, when you... Um, uh, and when you fill a vacancy or when the president would step forward. Yes, not for nomination papers. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that uh, for nomination papers. Uh, we uh, kept current. Uh, one of the topics that was uh, hotly debated in this room during one of the forums of whether the clerk should be elected or appointed, we kept it the way it is. Even though there were people who had strong feelings um, on that issue, it's the way it is. Uh, we retain the current two forms of citizen access, the initiative petition and the referendum, which have been used in this city during at least my 30-year tenure. Um, one of the things that was recommended that I think that we all embraced, though we did not feel it was a charter issue, and I'm going to call it the Barry Roth Amendment. He's sitting behind us over here. Um, uh, Mr. Roth very articulately on several occasions spoke to the need to include something that allowed for the re recording of the minority opinion. He talks about pros and cons, but I talk about the minority opinion. Uh, lots of times in our committees and on our task forces that we have as a city, only the majority opinion gets advanced and recorded in the minutes. Because it's done in subcommittees, it moves forward. There is not the full breadth of discussion. Barry um, suggests very strongly that we should make sure that all opinions are captured and that they should be recorded in the minutes and the structure. We felt that that was a best practice or a city council rule that that wasn't necessarily a charter piece. So we have kicked that to you folks for your dis discussion, and I know Barry is here to talk about that in future meetings as to where that should be placed. We also created or suggested the creation of two commissions. One is an ongoing commission that we wrote into the charter re regarding salary and compensation of all elected officials. Right now, it's uh, whenever you get around to it, and you haven't gotten around to your own for a long time. And I can tell you point blank that we reviewed what you folks do for the salary and compensation you would get, and we think you need a lot more money. But we also recognize how politically difficult that would be, especially during this decade-long recession that we seem to have been mired in. Uh, we felt that if there was a structured committee commission set up that would include outside folks, preferably people with background in this area, who could establish what the salary should be for city councilors, for mayors, for whatever. You did that on a periodic, regular basis. It's built into the charter um, as you have to consider it. Now, you have to vote on it, but not necessarily have to vote yes on it. But a commission would create a recommendation, and then that's a way that a salary adjustment could be made if uh, you deemed appropriate. We put that in the charter. Another piece that we put in a recommendation, but not the charter, was to take a look at our voting procedures. There was a lot of disc debate and, and um, uh, opinions on the preliminary elections. Should we continue to have them? Because there's a cost involved in there. Should um, the final person win by majority, or is it OK with it 40%? There was a lot of discussion. I got involved in that. I take ownership for that um, uh, on that particular issue. And then there was discussions about runoff systems. And then we also went into the um, instant runoff concept, which has been adopted. We felt that that was important information that needed to be vetted, but in a longer term. So we are suggesting a special commission. One of the reasons that that needs to also be taken out of the charter, but into your purview to create this commission, is it will directly impact the voting machines that we have. If you make a recommendation of a change, for instance, to IRV, you're going to need to have a voting machine change. And we are up in about two years, Wendy said, for that change. So this commission could be built into that. You could consider that as part of a commission. You may come out with that recommendation, and then you'd want to make sure that the machinery that we are about to purchase two years down the line is in accordance with that. So we're suggesting that you set up a commission, you take a look at that particular issue, um, 
along with do we need a, a majority to win an election? Can you do it with just a, a, re, a general election as opposed to a primary? Or should we, can we, should we, are we allowed to even do instant runoff, I mean runoffs? What is the legal hurdles if the, does the state allow those type of variances? So that commission is another one that we ask you to take a look at. So again, your homework in the next 60 days is to review this document. You can wholesale throw out what we have, create your own. But if you meet the timeline, by mid-March, you need to be sending uh, your second vote and sending this forward. <coughs> again, just having worked up on Beacon Hill, it takes a while for special acts to get through. It needs to get to the governor's office. And then more importantly, the Secretary of State needs to vet this to make sure it meets the timelines um, and then to put it on the ballot. So there's a lot of things that back us up to forcing a mid-March decision on your part. Um, the, the, the piece that we didn't deal with, remember I talked about this file cabinet over here with 100 special acts? Because of the need for legal support and background on that, and we need the city attorney, city solicitor to do this, somebody from this body, the city clerk, probably Mary, Steve McGoldrick, and the um, uh, city solicitor are going to need to read through those hundred special acts. Some of them are now null and void, but you need to, to weigh in on those and decide where they fit in the charter. That was over our pay grade. We could not do that without legal, legal support. So you're going to need to have the city attorney go through those and figure out where they fit in. That also has to be within your timeline. So there's a big piece that needs to be done here um, that we have not been able to get to. We are currently writing up, we were asked after we wrote the final draft, which you have in front of you, why? Why did you make some of these decisions? So the team behind me is currently writing, even though we dissolve in about five minutes, um, the, the, the team behind me is going to write up a narrative and also have some bullets as to why we made, what we considered, how we got to this decision, just to give whoever takes this over some more background information beyond the minutes, the hearing, um, and the logs that were taped. Again, I want to just reemphasize to the public that are, if they're still awake and paying attention, that it's the next 60 days. Um, if the city council adopts and moves forward, and I know Bill is going to talk about that in a few minutes, the timeline for advancing this, um, the, that, that's the timeline that the, before the second vote for the citizenry to weigh in. If you want to put up another opinion, you read part of this charter, I encourage you to read it. Read the old one, read the draft, and put your recommendations. But we really, we're in a very, very tight timeline. You got the next 60 days to deal with that. Uh, reason why November, tw uh, November 212 was, wanted to do it is because it, traditionally, if you look at elections, the elections that have presidential years in it have the most people voting. And that way, the most people in the city, as opposed to an off-year election where there might not be contests, we wanted the majority, as many people as possible, to weigh in on this, which is why I believe you created the timeline you did, which we're still trying to follow. Again, this is a consensus document. Um, I want to thank all the people sitting behind me who've done some work. And if you have questions, I can drag some of them up to help out. Good to get out. <laughs> so, thank you for all, all of your work, and I want to thank the entire committee. Uh, I want to ask you if you think it'd be useful if the council um, voted on continuing your committee for three days so you could finish this narrative uh, legally instead of uh, just on private time. <clears throat> that probably would be helpful. I was hoping to talk to Wendy prior to this meeting, and if we could just get an extension to the end of the month because the narrative is taking us a little bit longer to, to hammer out. All right, thank you. Uh, a couple process questions. Uh, in order for this draft to leap the hurdle of the council, uh, what's the vote threshold? Majority, supermajority? I don't have a clue. I saw that email today you sent me. I scrambled through all of my notes, and I honestly don't know what the recommendation is. That, Simple majority? Yeah. That would be my gut, but I don't know that for a well, fact. 
Well, it's important. I mean, yeah, it's a very important, and again, uh, we would need to check with the city solicitor or the Secretary of State's office for that piece. Do we have the information from 1983? No. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. I probably could dig that up. That was the alderman then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were a town then. Um, actually, what I, I am proposing, given what David has laid out in the charge that he's left us with, that, um, the special acts thing freaks me out. But uh, because that's actually, David's on his address book has dealt with the first five pages, and the rest of his address book is what we have to sort out. It's the special acts uh, that seemed appropriate at the time, 1954, 1948. 1936 that have no relevance or bearing and, and unfortunately as you said our, our charter is created much like the Massachusetts road system that followed down a goat path and then it wasn't planned it wasn't, it wasn't designed it was actually it evolved in the manner of speaking so that's a that's a big fight to take and what we're proposing what I'm proposing and with the council's permission is to assemble as a committee of the whole Rather than refer this out to committees, and because as we know, the committee schedule is not going to get this back in time, particularly if there are any questions or amendments and changes that are going to come back in time for us to do two readings to get it out, get it done, get it locked down by the mark. So the, the, we have the right to assemble essentially a special city council meeting dedicated exclusively to the discussion and deliberation of this, um, and maybe two. Oh, I hope not, but maybe two, and, the, and I have some prospective dates, um, and, and this is all contingent on whether we can get NCTV to cover. Um, I'm pretty confident that they will be able to, but uh, January 25th, uh, January 30th, the 31st, and then February 6th, 7th, and 8th. Sorry, uh, January 25th, these are the these are potential dates. Can we move that until the council uh, Right. I, that does, that does, we're not going to end the questions now with me to announce them. So I'm just, while I've got the floor, I was just going to say if somebody if you just write these down and figure out if it's going to fit in your calendar. This is to con potential days to convene as a committee of the whole to deliberate and discuss this. The whole council, rather than referring it to ordinance, rather than referring it to youth commission, uh, you know, and actually, or the human rights commission along that line. Well, at least one, okay. and possibly two, and I, because I don't know, I don't have a sense of what these, what the, what, what the attending to the special acts is going to take. I, I, again, I think with the help of the city solicitor or the city clerk, you should be able to run through those fairly quickly. It's like, again, 1954, the one you referred to, changed this from a, um, Having a two-chamber body, legislative body, to a right. one-chamber body, city council, and and again, so you just read it. You say, okay, not relevant to us. Move on. But for instance, the change in the treasurer's department, the change in the the board of public works, those are things that you need a little bit more technical ex expertise just to make sure that nothing change, nothing in the charter impacts that. Again, we took the charter. There are a lot of things in the charter that shouldn't be there. They should be in your rules and procedures. And we took things out of the charter that don't, shouldn't be there. And that's, I think, the things you have to sort out on those special acts. Should all those special acts be in the charter, or should they come back and just be in your code and ordinance books? So that's the, 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 time, that's the part that will be time consuming for when you decide that little piece of it. What's your, when you define a charter in your mind, as your committee went and proceeded with this, what was in your mind? The basic, a basic document that outlines who the elected officials are, the terms of those elected officials, and the powers of those elected officials. When we got into, we had departments coming forward wanting to impact the charter. We're saying, department information is not charter. Okay, that goes back to ordinances. So when the fire chief came and said, oh, we want to, you know, and it's like, no, nope. that goes back into ordinances. That's in your code books. That's not what's in a charter typically. So we, we really tried to hold fast to that line. And again, some of those special acts you're going to really need to need to go through just to make sure. Smith Vocational, um, the library, you've got several of these others, quasi-public relationships that we have. You have to make sure that they fit in in accordance with what the current charter has. But do I hear you saying essentially 
you don't think that those are appropriate for the charter, the boilerplate charter that we're going, that we should advance? I would defer to um, Steve McGoldrick, and I would defer to the city solicitor for a final opinion on that. Okay, but I think your your charter should be as streamlined as possible with the basic facts, because again, the charter is harder to change. Right? When you want to go and make a change on the Board of Public Works, you have to go through all the hoops of a special act. Is that really where you want to do it? Now, maybe some things you park there because you want to make it difficult and they can't change it easily. But really, is that where you want to have it so you can't modernize your, your document and you have to go through something like this that may or may not have a controversial... That somebody might find something in this charter that they disagree with and are going to campaign against it. But... 99% of the rest of the charter is good. So again, try to not to put too much into it that is going to get you the 800-pound gorilla that might, might be problematic. Okay, so it's actually, it's like the president around the possibility of dates, and you didn't read all those. Is there a report that we have, uh, either a request that if Stephen's recommended? Uh, um, I've talked with Steve McGoldrick, and he said he would make himself available. Okay. And, um, so that's who we would meet with for. And and I would invite members of, of the draft committee and, and, and to the, the recommendation committee as well to come and speak to these things. In fact, encourage. Maybe we can get. I, I doubt it, but maybe we can get more of the public to show up than you guys got for your meetings. Uh, but I mean, this is this is one of the last bites of the apple. So it's, it's important to emphasize that this is. Until in, well, the election, of course, is the biggest fight. But this is to the point where the public gets to weigh in and, and, and contribute to the, 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 the disposition of this, this charter. Well, Councilor Adams, Council President, do you, do you suggest meeting as a community the whole one or two times or however many times it takes? And that's it, and not, not have to go to ordinance after that? That would be my recommendation. I think. It, it, Given the fact that we comprise that that the ordinance is comprised of members of this council anyway, I mean it, 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 that's a procedure that actually would just be redundant and would it would also jeopardize the prospects for this this charter moving forward in a timely fashion. Council uh, um, I like that idea of all of us as part of government here being together and going through what we feel is extremely important in this charter. And I know I attended, I'll say everybody attended these charter committee meetings and um, there was a lot that was taught there at each one of these meetings. Um, I have to say I do have a resident on my ward who had great concerns, which the chair from the Charter Committee talked about Barry Roth. And he's not the only one. I've had some people who didn't come to the meetings but felt the same way he did also. I'm just wondering, when you're having this one or two meetings, and he suggested about, David did, about us talking with our city solicitor, do you think possibly she would be able to come to our first meeting? I, I would hope that that uh, that Elaine Reel would be present for that, uh, along with Steve McGoldrick, that we would have access to all the people we need to have access to in order to do this in an efficacious way. The city clerk needs to be there too, because again, the keeper of the facts. Yeah. So. It's, I, it, it will be. I, it is my hope that um, with this to be the final push, that this be a comprehensive inclusion of all the, the entities that have some input and, and say in this to help guide us, because this is a pretty big decision for us to make. And, um, and we have to give it the due diligence. And I also have to say, even with our city clerk, because she attended meetings with me, of uh, was importance of her vocally saying that we needed to be very, very careful on how that charter was designed and not pushing a lot on the voters. And she stressed that. And she said, because she said, oh, fail. 
she put things in there that are just overwhelming. She said it would fail. People wouldn't vote. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, so, Stephen Budget will be a set of things. Okay, because I just want a question. I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave. I did find that information out for you that we talked about earlier. There are 12 towns um, in the city, in the state, out of 12, excuse me, 12 cities in the state out of 55, I think now, that have a four year mayoral term. 12 out of 55 out of four term? Correct. Thank you. Okay. I, I have one other question here, but it's, um, I'm confused about some of the language in here. I'd like clarification. Should I wait for Stephen Goldberg for that sort of thing? I think it might be appropriate, but, you know. Uh, again, the final, final draft Mary has, uh, we were wordsmithing it today as the, as the clock was ticking. Uh, it is posted for the public to take a look at. If I may do one more thing, Dave, can I just turn to my committee? Did I represent this correctly? Are there any issues that I missed or needed to be emphasized? I just want to make sure that everybody is... Just that Mr. McGoldrick said he was work all the way through this process with the Thanks, Maddie. Anybody else want to add anything? Gail, do you have? Well, Please stand just, and come up here. Sorry, if you guys are going to talk to me, come up here. here. Okay, Hi, everybody. I'm Gail Perlman, a member of this committee. Um, I, I just wanted to emphasize that um, Mr. McGoldrick is going to help you a lot on the issue of all the multiple you know, phone book uh, uh, numbers that you have to go through. Um, he probably will do a lot of that prep work outside of the meetings that you're planning to hold. And my guess is that your, the most of your work in those meetings will be on the substantive changes and recommendations that this committee's made to the Charter. So I, I, it's an overwhelming task, I know, but I think you don't have to feel quite as overwhelmed as if you have to go through 900 ordinances that may not apply. Anything else from the team? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. It was fantastic. And I was going to make the recommendation that we look at this in a week from now, get together, and I just wanted to say that I'm available any time. I'm yeah, pretty flexible, so whatever shows up, I'm ready. So. Just send me an email. Okay. We're going to try to select the date now. I also want to thank you, David. Being the chair was not an easy job, and I thank you for doing what you did. And I also want to thank all the committee members because it was a challenge. And I know because Councilor Jesse um, Adams, Councilor Murphy, and I were on the first one, and that was not easy. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, again, I appreciate the support of all the city councils. Not only have you attended many, most of you attended all the meetings, but you provided some great feedback, which I think helped us. Some of the issues that you put forward, we basically felt you could deal with them in this next phase, because there, there's some issues personal that you want to speak to, and we felt you were better to equip that to convince your peers to, to make whatever changes. But we do feel we put together a consensus document. Um, we do feel that this is the best document we can put forward given our 90 days and it has a, I feel at this point in time, a good chance of passage by the city because we don't have any wild things in there that could make people concerned. Can we get a comprehensive list, of the, an easy to read list of the 100 special acts or whatever the other stuff that's over here? Yeah. Uh, I defer to Mary on that. They're online. Yeah. And, and that was in the, in the, um, the, the committee that Alan chaired that, that you three were on. They're, they actually highlighted all those and put them together for us. So it was very, that was a good first step. But okay. it's, it's something that needs a legal attorney to take a look at. Thank you. Councilor Freeman, when we close the presentations and the quarters, I'd like to amend the order of August 18th. He's announcing it's a moment. So is there any other item, any other questions or um, comments? Again, thank you very much, Mr. Chair.
chair and to the entire committee for your service for, for bringing this forward. Thank you. Would you be more comfortable, with, or would the council be more comfortable if this came up like two days in a row? If, if we needed two meetings two days in a row, probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but I mean, yeah, that's harder to schedule in some cases. Uh, but we'll see. Let's uh, if, if everyone sends which dates are available, then Mary and I will go through and hopefully we'll find a lot that are all in accord and that we can pull this off. We're, 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 we're committed to moving on this quickly, but at the same time, I mean, it's critically important that we have, as I said, this is one of the last bites of the apple, so this is, it's critically important that, that um, there's public input and public access to the deliberations. Councilor Barge. Yes, um, January 30th, there is something going on at the Garden House. Um, there is an event that's going on at the Garden House in the evening, that's correct. Uh, but, you know, we can, we'll, that's, that will be coming. That might be one of the conflicts. We're also open to time as well. Oh, Obviously, the preference would be for the evenings, I think. That's, um, because if you want to invite the public to talk and speak, you, you want to have it so that it's usually in the evening so the public can attend. So. Okay, so it sounds like there'll be some communication about what which of these dates will be available, um, and then you'll announce something. All right, so if we can return to the regular order of the meeting, um, uh, we'll pass the presentation point. Um, so we'll move now 